Today, we're going to be answering some of your medical questions in English. So if you come to London and you have any emergency, any medical problem, and you want to explain it, this is the video you need. And to help me with this video is my good friend, Ed. Who are you? So my name's Ed Hope. I'm a junior doctor in the UK and I run a YouTube channel as well. I talk about medicine in a fun, simple, entertaining way. So thanks for having me on. Thanks for being here. So if you come to London and you have a medical emergency, what's the first thing you need to do? Okay, so I guess for broadly speaking, any emergency, you need mm. to know how to get in contact with people, right? Right. So basically to contact all the emergency services, so the police, fire, and also to get the ambulance, you need to know the number, which is any phone and you dial 999, and then you'll speak to a receiver who will, will then take any, you know, take the details of what's going on and be able to talk you through. And then who should they ask for? The good thing about the receivers is they're super well trained. So it's basically just to listen to the instructions that they're talking to you. So if their English isn't perfect, mm. they'll be okay? Absolutely. Again, they'd be well trained. They'd use very simple English. And if, if they were struggling with it, they'd obviously try and use techniques to try and get out what they need. Also worth mentioning the number 111. Okay, so we have a number that we can speak to. <laughs> so this is basically the kind of NHS direct number. So this is if you need any kind of, um, not emergency help, but if you kind of need some urgent medical help, but you don't know who to talk to, um, that's a number you can call from any phone as well. So 111 and they can, it's 24 hours, and they can give you access to any kind of medical advice should you need it. Oh, over the phone? Yes. So you can describe what's happening and they will help you. Yeah, absolutely. And often if you don't know where to go, they can give you those points as well. For example, if you have really bad toothache and you don't know any dentists in the area, which I guess you wouldn't if you're traveling to the UK, yeah. they can tell you which emergency dentists are open at the time um, and how you'd go about getting an appointment as well. Damn, that's cool. I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I asked you guys, what were your main concerns, your main questions about traveling to the UK and dealing with the healthcare system. Pretty much the majority of people asked, is it free and will they die waiting? <laughs> is that what they asked? Yeah. Is this the type of impression that we give to the wider world? This is, um, yeah, this is where us communists this do healthcare it. wrong, apparently. This is it. Abdullah FG, how does the NHS work? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> Easy. <laughs> It's easy. Basically, we tax people and then we pay the, the medical people. That's it. It's e easy. What is the what, big problem? What, what else do you need to say? What else Done. do you need to say? Done. So the idea is the NHS free. I yeah. find this quite a, a funny question, actually. And a lot of people get the kind of misconception that the NHS is free. Like one of the core principles of the NHS is that it's free at the point of use. So you don't actually pay for it when you use it but that, it still gets paid for, right? As we know, because we get taxed and we get national insurance. So it's the people living in the UK for our taxes and national insurance that fund the NHS. Yeah, so it's like, it's free, but it's not free <laughs> at all. <laughs> exactly, so it's free at the point of use, which is really right. good, because really, when you're really unwell, you don't want to be worrying about having to, how much it's going to cost you, okay? Yeah. So you pay for it every day for, you know, in case you need it in an emergency like that. But it's also important to remember that not everything is free, okay? So there are certain surcharges for certain things like prescriptions, um, as we talked about dental work, uh, to see um, an optician, if you're getting your eyes tested. So all of those have additional surcharges as well. And often a lot of people forget as well, there is still a big private, uh, health service within the UK as well. A lot of the people were asking, um, well, if they're coming from inside the EU or outside the EU and they have and they have a hospital visit or a doctor's visit, did they have to pay? And if so, like how much? Yeah, really good question, because obviously we talked about the NHS is funded by um, the residents of the UK. Yeah. So then how do we then extend those services out? We're not really set up to take money from people like other healthcare systems. The way to summarize it, if you've got your European health insurance card, you have the same level of cover in the country you're in as you have in the UK. Okay, 
that's the, that's the be all and end all essentially. Right. So anything extra that you need to pay for, you'd have to pay in your own country anyway. So that's why people get travel insurance as well. So you, the health card doesn't suddenly give you all the care that someone in the NHS gets. Right. It just gives you the care up to the country that you're coming Now, from. when you're saying like the care, you get treated the same, yeah. but the costs would be different depending on your country of origin. Exactly. Done. It's pretty complicated. <laughs> like I, yeah. Like I say, I had to look this up to chat about it because yeah. it was a new thing to me but you know there are some nuances there as well so do check out the links down below they're yeah. they're very they're very well written very clear um and they give the sort of precise terms that i'm referring to i used to have students who were here for like a year or two um so they had the student visa mm. and one of them got swine flu Right. And uh, yeah, they didn't have to pay for their hospital visit. That's interesting because, you know, I talked about c there are certain nuances as well. Yeah. So certain things like particular infectious diseases that have a wider public health thing, they're covered for everyone. Oh, yeah. So if there's another swine flu and you get it. Fine. doesn't matter where you're from. <laughs> that will be covered. But um, there's a list of things in the links below that tell you what's covered and what isn't. So things you'd always get care for things like sexually transmitted infections, significant infectious disease that's kind of could be a, um, a wider public health issue. All of that is covered for. Imagine coming to see a doctor and, you know, we say, oh, it's going to cost this to treat and you think, I won't bother. And then you infect 100,000 people. So yeah. certain things are automatically included. And that's why I say there are certain nuances. <laughs> Beeldor, do they kill people? No. There's a bit of a hesitation there, but absolutely no. Alanis Morissette. If Alanis you, Morissette. Not, not the same Sorry. one, not the same one. Okay, sure. it's, it's with an E. Sure. If you need an ambulance, who pays for that? It'll be funded uh, from the NHS, so out of taxation. So if you call 999 and they think you do need an ambulance, they'll that will get sent to you. and There'll be never any charge for that for anyone. Someone in my family got sick in America and they needed an ambulance. And I think it was like $1,000 just for the ambulance ride. Mm. We're very lucky, aren't we? It's nuts, yeah. Mm. But that would put people off. you think, right? wouldn't it? But I'll drive myself. <laughs> yeah. My foot's <laughs> Endanger more people by driving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another question. Can you get PrEP in England? But PrEP is pre-exposure prophylaxis. So people who are at risk of getting HIV. Maybe they have a partner with HIV. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure about that. I have I have given out post-exposure prophylaxis, so PEP um, before, so that is available. And as we talked about earlier, you know, we said there's some nuances that people can get free, um, you know, free medical care. Infectious disease and sexually transmitted infections, one of those things that would be covered as well. Super common complaints. Okay, okay. CZ Jenny. I've got a sore throat and I would like to ask for medication. What is that called? Okay, so if you've just got a sore throat and you just want to deal with the symptoms because you've had a sore throat before, it feels very similar to your previous sore throats, then you can just get some pain relief for it. So paracetamol or ibuprofen, something like that. Um, if you had more concerning things, so this is the kind of worst sore throat you've ever had and you know, you've got other symptoms like feeling really unwell and difficulty rousing from the bed, then you may therefore want to get some medical help. So most uh, infections of the throat are viral, so we just need to treat the symptoms. But some of them can be a bacterial infection and benefit from antibiotics. So that's maybe another medication that your doctor will prescribe if they think you need it. Right. Um, so you mentioned like ibuprofen, paracetamol. You can get them from these shops and they go with the store brand ones. They cost like 20p. And there's no difference between those and the expensive brands, right? Exactly. They're exactly the same drug, although some of the, the brands will put other medications in. For example, they may put some caffeine in to kind of perk you up. So do, do read the, the box. But the actual um, medication name itself, the actual drug name itself, is often exactly the same drug. Oh, okay. Sure. So, this next one, Golden Violet is asking, why do GPs cure everything with paracetamol? <laughs> well, paracetamol in itself won't really cure anything apart from help your pain and maybe reduce your temperature as well. 
Um, it's generally because maybe they're not concerned of anything serious going on. So they're just controlling the symptoms of what's going on until your body's able to heal itself. Right. That's essentially what the GP would be doing. And if it hasn't healed itself, the GP will rely on you coming back in and then formulating another plan. So whenever I go to another country and I'm, I'm sick, I've got a cold or I've got the flu, mm -hmm. people will say, you need to go to the doctor. You need to go to the hospital. Like, no, I don't. <laughs> I need to sleep and drink water. Like, yeah. You don't need to go to the hospital for that. You're right. I think we give a lot of power to the medical profession that we're curing all these things. But most of the work is done by your own body. So as, unless the symptoms are kind of, you know, unless we need some intervention, often the body, if we give it time, will be able to heal itself. Oh, interesting point. So a load of my students told me, and I didn't mm. know this until I traveled outside, that... You can get like ibuprofen, paracetamol, aspirin just in a shop, in like the same place you buy food. Mm. But in other countries, no. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say the opposite of that, actually. So, yeah, I don't know the ins and outs of where you can buy stuff outside of the UK, but clearly those things you can buy in shops here. Yeah. But I thought you were going to go the other way because in a lot of parts of the world, you can actually buy things like antibiotics just over the counter. You Without don't... a prescription? Exactly. What? Yeah, so uh, many of the illnesses that you treat yourself, when you go to the pharmacist, you may find that you can't necessarily get the things that you want here, in which wow. case you may then need to, you know, go see a doctor to have it prescribed to you. Now, would you say that that's part of the problem with some viruses and diseases becoming um, antibiotic resistant? Mm -hmm. Because people are just self-medicating yeah so it's yeah absolutely right so bacterial infections they if they can evolve and change they become resistant to the antibiotics and that is one of the main reasons so not just antibiotics being taken by humans but also you know in the agricultural business as well but that's right. a much wider that's a bigger question big, big that's scope. a much bigger question <laughs> francesco looks he's asking how do you ask just for a routine exam what you're asking about is a checkup we don't tend to do just kind of routine medicals for for anything particular. I mean, we do call we would call it a doctor's checkup, um, but there's only there'd be fixed times that you'd be invited to that um, if you're a resident in the UK. There may be a certain requirement for your job that they want a checkup beforehand, um, and that's you'd phone up your GP and and probably give the details of of why you'd need that. But it's not something that is routinely done in the UK. Makes sense. Mutir Tabib is mm -hmm. saying, how can I make a GP appointment? So the best thing to do is call 111 okay. and they'll be able to give you access to, first of all, whether you need to see a GP, they may direct you to the pharmacist or things like that. Can they give you a prescription? No, they oh. can't. It needs to be a doctor that prescribes something okay. or an advanced nurse practitioner, but we, we won't go into that. Um, if you're unsure of the area, then you want to phone 111. They can tell you what GPs are in your area. But as we said earlier, not all GPs would necessarily be accepting patients at a particular time. Right. So it's worth calling the nearest GP to you. And then if they can't help, they often know the practice in the area that can accept appointments. Isabella Dinadi is asking, why do so many Spanish nurses migrate to the UK? Wow. Have you found that? Yes. There's so many nurses and other healthcare professionals from all over Europe and the world. I mean, particularly um, from Spain, actually. Spain, I, Spanish. Why? Yeah, and Portugal as well. I mean, I don't know. the. Re I'll have to ask them, but it's certainly true in my experience as well. Yeah, and also the, they tend to be very highly skilled as well. Maybe it's uh, the NHS for pinching them, but certainly that is a thing. Our pay can't be that bad. Edimercio, he asked, I've got lactose intolerance. How can I ask if a meal has it or not? You could just say, is it dairy free? Okay, this is kind of subjective. Matthew is asking, is it a good service? I mean, according to the taxes they take from your salary. I mean, we try our best. I mean, we are funded by the people. We're there to serve the people. Just as an example, um, when I had my tonsils out, I had to wait six months, I think, but I wasn't dying. I could have waited longer. Yes, six months is a long time to wait, but it was free and I wasn't dying. There are other people who needed to have surgery before I did, mm. right? That's a good way to look at it. Some people aren't always so uh, 
calm with that approach but you know that that is the way to see it the people that i see and treat they understand that we prioritize um, based on urgency so if you are often waiting in the hospital it's not because we you know we want to keep you waiting or anything like that it's because we have we don't think you're as sick as other people or don't right. need urgent care. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it is we don't see people based on anything other than the urgency. So it doesn't matter how rich you are in the NHS, you won't you won't get someone pushing in front of you like that. Right. You'll only you we we know that if you're sat somewhere waiting, it's generally that we're comfortable with you waiting. Which I time. like. I much prefer that that everyone's treated equally and depending on how sick you are rather than well i pay more money mm. therefore i get treated yeah. faster that's disgusting or i've been waiting longer than yeah. someone but you know you want to you want to know that people are getting yeah. treated who are the sickest yeah okay dude thank you that was really really fun so i love his videos because he explains um everything medicine in movies and tv and in general in such an easy to understand way. So if you have any interest in medicine or just TV and movies in general, check out his videos. Especially now you have that Marvel series. Thanks, man. Friggin' love that. <laughs> so um, you can click around, you can click here and find that, somewhere around here. So I can see it there, yeah. You can see it there, right? Yeah. That video is great, <laughs> but what do you think of that video? Iffy. Yeah.